We're rolling. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mitch. All right, we have an emergency podcast. So, <laughs> um, BK, if you don't mind, I'm going to lay the groundwork for what sure. happened yesterday, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, yesterday, our Tyler Hubbard podcast came out, and uh, your wife reached out to my wife and asked for her phone number, for my phone number. Yeah. You, within. I don't know, 90 seconds of that phone number being received by your wife, I had my phone was ringing. BK gets on the phone. He's like, listen. Heart, heart pounding? Well, my heart's pounding right now, kind of like <laughs> re-saying it all. Because when you, we as well as, hey man, how's it going? All, a lot of compliments. Like, hey, love your show, love you guys. And I know something's coming. Like the way you're kind of building me up. I knew something was was headed my way. The shit sandwich. The shit sandwich, right. <laughs> something positive. Positive, negative, yeah. positive. And you kind of get lost in the meat. Yeah. So you called, uh, obviously there were things about that podcast that you didn't believe to be the truth and that you said you've been quiet for a long time and you would love the opportunity to say your side of the story, which that's what busting with the boys is all about. Yeah. You also said on that podcast that I said some things about you that were disrespectful to me. I immediately, once we hung up the phone, first thing I did was call Will. Second thing I did was, was get like, on the oh, YouTube and start watching that clip. And the clip that you refer to, and Mitch, I hope you play that back. What happened beyond the way with you and, and BK that's like to where Florida Georgia line can't be forever? Yeah, good question. I mean, for me, it was it was really unexpected. But BK came to me and said, man, I'm really feeling like I, w- I want to do a solo thing. And I'm like, really? I'm like, we were just getting out of our first deal. We were kind of in a sweet spot that we had worked for 10 years to get to. And I'm like, bro, like, why don't we just ride this thing out for like five more years, 10 more years? And then we can do the solo thing or whatever. But yeah. again, like I wanted to support him. He, he was adamant. Like, no, nah, now's my time. I, I really need to do this for myself. And I'm like, well, hey, whatever you need to do, bro. Like, what do you want from me? He's like, I just want support. So I'm like, all right, you got it, bro. Like, we've had an incredible ride. This is where it's going to go. Like, let's do it and, and you crush it. And you never know. Maybe it'll bring us back together and we can have a reunion tour or whatever but uh but it was he he definitely initiated the whole thing from the beginning and it kind of when i say caught me off guard it wasn't that we had never mentioned it before it's just one of those things where i didn't think then i didn't think it was gonna happen then you know what i mean is we're talking about the breakup and i if i see what you see when you're looking at through the lens of what your main storyline here is with you and tyler Mm -hmm. but when i'm talking to will about if will did this if i did this to will Will would probably be like, you piece of shit. I was, I'm was i the burger guy. You're just a toppings guy. From Which, that story. That from was, the storyline. Because yeah. I'm putting myself in a, in a headspace of Will and I's relationship, not yours and Tyler's. I put myself in a headspace of how much Will does for the bus in the back end, as opposed to how much I do. And all of I, kind of the ins and outs of how Will and I's relationship works. And I'm kind of just trying to make a humor out of a situation that's uncomfortable for everybody to see on a bus. So with that, I want you to know that busting with the boys is not here to ever attack you or attack anybody. My opinions, Will's opinion is never going to be made by what other people say about people. It's going to be about the interactions that we have with people. That's going to dictate how we feel about them. So as long as you feel good about that, brother, we can get right into it. No, I appreciate it. And thanks for, thanks for answering the call and getting me on here, man. I'm, I've been wanting to get on here for years and, uh, you know, great to be able to clarify some things. And, and also, you know, I got an album coming out in two days, so Perfect timing. Hey, Great timing. Yeah. Forget the Kendrick Lamar and Drake beef. We got <laughs> <laughs> some, some FGL. We yeah. got to get these numbers We got some up. Southern yeah, beef yeah, going yeah, on. Some, right? That's hilarious. Some country beef, man. Uh, uh, where do you want to start? Uh, I mean, how do y'all want to start it? I like I'm, that. I'm, I'm, I'm open-minded to be how honest How about... We can say I didn't, I didn't 100% really come with an agenda. You know? Yeah, um, you're, you're I just, listening. I wanted yeah. to be able to have an open conversation and... You know, I guess I could start it off, but, you know, I had multiple, you know, friends and family and fans kind of reach out and pass, you know, some clips over and then the the episode. And, you know, really at the end of the day, you know, for the fans sake, the ones that have paid money to, you know, see Tyler and I and support us over the years, hard earned money for concert tickets, Mm. CDs, vinyl records, merch, you know, my family, uh, my mom and dad our family friends, you know, I think it's important to, you know, shed some light on, you know, my experience and, and what, what it was like going through that for me and not just one side of the story. And, um, so I appreciate the outlet to be able to come here in a place where, um, I'm fans of y'all. Like, again, I I watch y'all some of the jelly roll earnest things or some, I haven't laughed that hard in a long time, man. Like I really enjoy the show. So I was a little taken back yesterday just on some of the things. And I, I hear after talking to you what you're saying. Um, but, you know, um, I, I would love to give 
some light on just kind of the scenario on, on kind of how some of that went down. Right. And I wouldn't even call it a, a beef thing. I don't think this is really a, a beef situation. Um, but I do, I do think it's important to, to speak my truth and, and to, you know, at the same time stand up for myself, you know, cause it's not just him that was FGL, you know, there's two of us and that's, that's what made it so special. So to right, kind of start, you guys, you you guys know. were on the top too. And so oh, when, yeah. when this is all unfolding, you're kind of just hearing through the grapevine that, Oh, there, there's something going on. Like there's not, I don't think FGL, they're going to, they're going to be a, a band or a crew anymore. And then you guys go the solo route. I do feel like everybody's curious on what happened. So when we have Tyler on like me, I only know, I, I know Tyler through Taylor. So then when we're sitting here listening to Tyler and referring to that clip and everything else, like I'm just taking whatever's being said. It's like, he's the only one that I'm hearing from. No, I um, totally get it. I totally yeah. get that. I'm, I'm understanding of that. Um, you know, to kind of start, uh, you know, when we, uh, kind of referencing, you know, how we got to, you know, I heard BK and my name kind of thrown out quite a bit. And just to give some clarity, you know, back to, you know, BK wanted a solo career. Um, to clarify that, you know, um, I'm a songwriter, you know, I moved to Nashville to write songs. We ended up in a duo and I'm forever grateful for what we were able to do, man. We met, we had magic, amazing fans. We went on a hell of a ride. I'm forever grateful for that. And, um, just what an, what a time, you know? So, um, we've had that, we've had the conversation of having extra outlets since 2016. And then every, every two years after that. Extra and outlets, so, meaning, meaning, like, you know, I, I had voiced that, you know, I want to obviously keep doing FGL, but for me, you know, in my off time, when songwriters, creatives are alone, you find even more of yourself and there's going to be songs over the years that just being a songwriter, you know, I'm going to write that aren't going to fit the brand of FGL. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it was important for me to, you know, continue to honor my craft, my, my artistry, my songwriting. And so, you know, I had voiced that for a long time and, you know, we kind of made a deal, you know, where once our fifth record is done, our terms up, you know, we're going to create more freedom for ourselves. We're going to keep FGL going. We're going to, you know, put out some solo stuff. So it wasn't a surprise um, because the marker was was in place of once our deal came up. And I want you guys to know and I want the fans to know, you know, we were trailblazers and I was a part of that, you know, Um I had an idea that when our deal came up, you know, we could, Tyler would get a solo deal under the same label. I would get a record deal and then we would renegotiate a new record deal and something, you know, I've talked to many, um, industry, you know, record label heads and they talk about this 10 year transformation and we had, you know, a solid 10 years of commercial success. And, you know, how do you go from where we were the next 10 years? What does that look like? Mm -hmm. And honoring not only myself, you know, my songwriting, but his songwriting. He's a great songwriter. He's had songs cut by other artists that I have nothing to do with and vice versa. And, you know, that fueled the group and that fueled both of us was waking up every day, hunting down songs and ideas. And, you know, for to have another trailblazing idea, my idea was, hey, let's keep everything going and let's do a three hour set. No openers. Let's do solo songs. Let's do FGL songs and be under the same umbrella and nothing changes. And so watching the episode yesterday, you know, just so casual that, you know, he just he wanted to do FGL, too. Um, I wanted to do it all. You know, I didn't think that was out of bounds. You look at Lady A, you know, Hillary does some solo records in the Christian space. Charles Kelly has done some solo stuff. He does some shows. And I love how that operates. I think that's pretty special that you can you can honor yourself and you can honor what you've built and you can continue forward. So that's the mindset that I had. It wasn't just, I have to have a solo career. I would word it as, I wanted a solo outlet mm -hmm. as a creative, as a songwriter. So that's just, I wanted to reshape, you know, that that part of the story for you guys because you know i put a lot of thought into what that could look like you know i had a lot of conversations uh wrote out a pretty detailed plan and i don't think it's emotional you know it doesn't have to be emotional i, I was re listening to things that you know it gets sticky about what songs go where 
I think it's easy to figure out. It's, it's, it's not emotional thing for me when we're talking about business and creativity and going forward. And also, man, what we had and what we built in a short amount of time, people would give their entire lives for. Mm -hmm. and, and some people never get to that place. So I don't ever want to downplay the success and everything that we built, it means a lot to me. It still does. It's very important. And, you know, like, uh, made a lot of history, made a lot of memories. There's a great brotherhood there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so I, 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 it's not some casual, you know, I wanted just to go off on my own. It was very intentional about a new plan. How do we genre bend? How do we trailblaze for another 10 years, right? Right, right. Because so, you're probably thinking you were getting to the end of this. Was it the fifth record or the fifth? Fifth the, record. You're yep. coming up on a deal yep. and you're thinking the way we've exploded, something that you've been intentional about since, what was it, 2016? Yep. 2016. Yeah. And kind of put pen to paper and everything else. In your mind, you're thinking, do we just do the same thing and we think right. it's going to carry or in your brain, how do we how do we kind of branch off or utilize the platform yep. and leverage that we've created to right. also you know, benefit ourselves and put it all together, not benefit ourselves separately, but benefit ourselves and like put everything together to make it seem like, what can we do different to add to our yeah, shows, do, to our concerts? For sure. How do we show our talents and our brand and ourselves in a different way that nobody's seen before? So I thought that was a really good idea. And obviously we couldn't, you know, really at the end of the day agree on what that looked like. But I just think it's important for people to know that I didn't leave FGL. I didn't want to just do solo and half-ass FGL. And y'all talked about, well, you know, what would happen if a solo show came up for me and an FGL show? It's the same thing with y'all's podcast when y'all were still playing. Mm -hmm. It's like, my main job is my main job. What I do with my off time is my time, right? Just like y'all. And yeah. so, you know, I, I was also curious about what the conversation looked like with Vrabes, you know, when you guys wanted to do a podcast and I, I know you guys can relate to what, you know, probably I was, I was feeling and I felt of wanting, wanting to do more and wanting to create more, man. You know, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a songwriter, I'm an artist. Me and my wife have multiple businesses together. Tyler and I had multiple things running, you know, uh, a great publishing company, giving songwriters a voice and helping shape their creative talents. And so we had a lot of irons in the fire and having a lot of fun at it. So it was really nothing new. Um, in a, in a sense, but, uh, that's kind of where I wanted to start. Yeah. You know, um, well let's, let's, um, so just for clarity, when was that fifth album done? When was like the end? What year was that? Uh, we turned it in May of, we turned that album in May of 2020. So May of 2020. So we're talking about, it didn't about come a... out till February. Mm -hmm. so and I also, I also would love to hit on this too. I think it's important because I've read a lot of articles that have some facts in there and some truths, and then some are just not, not on the timeline, um, you know, uh, for what it's worth, I just want to be factual here. You know, Tyler had solo music out before I even did, you know, before we even got our fifth album out, mm -hmm. you know, he had released a couple songs. He had played, um, Biden's inauguration, which was a huge look to be a solo act with Tim McGraw. Mm -hmm. Um, he had released another song and, you know, my, I didn't start releasing music till April. Yeah. So, um, I just think that's that's I'd, I'd love for fans and anybody listening to know that's the truth. Right. Um, there are, know, he, there he was rocking at radio immediately, you know, top of January of 2021. Um, and I didn't get music out till April and then the album in June. And, you know, I created Sunshine State of Mind with a sonic respect of what we had built. And also I created Sunshine State of Mind in a time. My fault. It's all good in a time where the world was shut down, you know, like I've always dove into songwriting and the highs and lows of life. When life is good, I want to write. When life mm. is bad or in between, I'm going to write. And so it helped me get through a hard time, you know, of being able to dive into songs that aren't going to fit on an FGL record, but songs that I can, you know, that are authentic to me and just get my voice out there. And it was, you know, a passion project. Right. Um, now, now it's a career. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It wasn't supposed to be a career, but I have I through a chain of events of some of what you heard, um, you know, I wasn't able to do both. Right. And, and but your goal was you wanted to do both. Yeah, absolutely. You wanted to have your outlet. And your, it wasn't casual. Being yeah, FGL. it wasn't casual. It was very thought out. It was very intentional, very mm -hmm. methodical, just like every every move that I make. Mm -hmm. Um 
I, and so in that realm, when you talk about Lady A and the people you're referring to, who's kind of done the the thing that you were trying to be intentional in creating, how do you give us some game on how something like that works and stays together? Like, did you have conversations with any of these groups? Because and there are also groups with ultimately where stuff gets sticky and gets in the way you break up, depending on how the friction goes. But mm -hmm. when you're creating this and being intentional, pen to paper and everything else, what what does success look like with all that that you were trying to present to both of you guys do you know what yeah, i mean yeah i remember i remember talking to big kenny back a couple years ago and he was like you know all that matters is if you guys are on the same page that's all that matters and you know clearly we we 100 percent weren't but um man i mean we were at a point where we were only playing 25 to at the high end maybe 40 shows a year we had mm -hmm. just signed the biggest live nation deal probably a duo had ever signed and I was really looking forward to touring those dates. They ended up getting canceled, um, but was really looking forward to connecting with fans, getting out there and doing what we do. And to me, you know, nothing would have changed. It's like, it's just like what, when I have free time, because we're not burning up the road like we used to, you know, it was mm -hmm. a very select amount of shows, with the grill a little bit, back, a couple of award night, shows a right? year, you know, a couple things. And it's a lot of free time. Like, they can go on vacation. They have kids. You know, they have different priorities and things that they love to do, just like, you know, me and my family. And, you know, a lot of my off time, I like to work on songs. I like to get creative and work on other things. And so um, to me, I, I worded it that nothing would change. It's like we can we can figure out what that looks like um, specifically on, you know, figuring out a week to block out writing some songs or recording like i'll never not be there mm -hmm. um i just i just thought it was a great look for both of us like i encouraged like i said you know him to do some solo i want to do some solo and then we'll continue to do what we've always done and and trailblaze right yeah so, yeah um to me nothing has changed like you didn't miss football practice to come do a pod no no you know what i'm saying like and here's <laughs> that, the deal when you said that literally actually scared and, and i just want you to know it's <laughs> like, like am i missing practice right? starting yeah. over as a solo artist for both of us it's mm -hmm. like well do i go do a bk show and make and lose money right or do i go make what we make for fgl it's a no-brainer yeah right and so i just i think it's important to hear my experience and my heart uh, oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. From, from kind of how, how we conceptualize this idea and, and how I thought of it. Um, but really, yeah, I didn't I didn't want anything to change. It's like you do what you want to do on your free time. That's great. I want to do what I want to do in my free time. And, you know, we'll schedule dates out to record, crush some shows, yeah. mm -hmm. continue to make money for our families on something that we've given 13, 14 years of our life to that that not many people have the opportunity to even do, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, that's, when, when that's did it mindset. start? When did it start to go sideways? Cause you had mentioned earlier about what was it? February of 2020. When it got yeah, released? 21, 21 is when, when he, he released gave, his first really, album or first songs. Yeah. He his gave song released came out in January. April of 21. Yeah. So story when did Tyler, Tyler solos come out? Solos came out in February of 21. Tyler on the, when he sat on the bus, so that BK came to him and wanted to go solo. That's not what we were saying is incorrect. That's partially the truth, not fully the truth is what you're saying, right? Yeah. Was it, he already starting to do solo stuff? Um, I got a call like in December. While you were trying to figure out like... Yeah, I wasn't ready to make an announcement on having solo outlets and, and, and do that. He really thought it was necessary to do that in January, January 3rd or 4th. You can go back and look on FGL Instagram of mm -hmm. 21. Um, it was his idea to go on and say, hey, we're going to be doing some different things. We're going to still tour. Um, and that was only because he had a song with McGraw coming out, mm -hmm. um, Undivided. And he was going to be playing, like I said, the Biden inauguration and starting to get out there and get visible as a solo artist. So I wasn't even ready to to make that announcement because I'm like, yo, our album. So his song came out in January. Our record was coming out in February. Yeah. Yeah. And I was ready to like ride that out go do press you know and um focus on that and not in a place where i wanted to rush out this announcement and not even ready for that mm -hmm. so when that announcement happened you weren't wanting that to go no to go live mm -mm. um when you were you brought the biden inauguration a couple of times 
that obviously is a big deal because of how polarizing the political has, political stuff has been for like the last 10 years. Was that a conversation that both of you had, whether that was appropriate or not, for FGL, a representative of FGL to go do that? Or did that kind of... Because a lot of people do think a lot of the breakup was political. That's what, that's what I was getting yeah. at is because... You know, he does a Biden inauguration. So shortly after that, you guys are now solo careers, and there's mm -hmm. not a whole lot of communication. Did you guys speak about that before Tyler did it, or it's kind of no? Just I was down. I was down in uh, South Florida looking at boats, mm -hmm. and he called me and said, "Hey, I, I I've already recorded it. Um, you know, I'm putting a song with Tim out." So I was told what was happening, right? And uh, he said, I'm, "We're going to play the inauguration. It's going to be how it's are you be a reacting?" Moment. I. To be honest with you, I was just a little caught off guard yeah. because, you know, I was told that, and I, I was on board with this, that, you know, no solo music comes out before the FGL record. Right. Right. So I was all on board. And then to get a call saying, you know, he's going to make, make a very visible statement and performance um, before the record and then go to, go right to radio, uh, you know, definitely a little caught off guard. Yeah. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day. Um, Where were you January 6th? <laughs> we just get that oh, sorry we just watched That's the roast of tom right brady i'll tell you so what a little comfortable. that question that will and i just asked you traded those waters beautifully that's you hilarious. did because that's a tough time when you're like biden trump and you're just like holy shit yeah, how do i get through yeah, yeah. these but things? man you know like, well, going on concerts it's like concerts were getting canceled some some artists still toured like maybe maybe tyler didn't want to maybe you i, I don't i'm right. so curious how everything was unfolding that's why i'm asking your and reaction I, you know i've read a lot you. and people have said you know it, it was political and all that but you know really the public the public issues started um i believe it was right after right after the election in 2020 um you know he he and his wife had unfollowed us and um you know he i'm not i'm not exaggerating you know he got on it's you can go look up the videos but he said you know bk was posting some stuff um some political stuff and i didn't want to see it and he, he you know told me that he liked me better in person not online that caught me off guard as well mm -hmm. uh, for my brother to, to have those thoughts and feelings. Right. Um, but um, so that was the first kind of thing that happened where, uh, you know, publicly it was people, I could see how they started framing that. For yeah. sure. Um, but because everything's you know, very heightened at that time. Yeah. Extremely heightened at the time. Yeah. For everybody. Um, but, you know, I grew up in a world where, you know, my dad was in politics for 20 years, city commissioner, mayor, county chair. And I watched him move and progress the city, counties, mm -hmm. along with different-minded people. And that's what makes America great, is people that see things differently, but can still get it done at the end of the day. Yeah. Right? That's my mindset. That's how I approached it. Um, so, you know, for me and my family, it wasn't political. We didn't unfollow anybody. I was ready to go to work. Mm -hmm. and um so now is, is a that, lot of this stuff being just un like there's not a lot of communication going on and then you're both kind of finding out just things on the internet or are you guys kind of in tune with each other the whole time knowing that there's some instability happening it's just yeah, more of a ticking time yeah bomb. yeah we were talking you know we got on a uh, a podcast you know a day or two after that uh there's like a rolling stones article that came out about the unfollowing yeah the so what we got on. To, I know. Huh? Got on. I didn't want to get on and do that, but got on to try to do some damage control. I don't think that did any good. Wait, okay, you go on a podcast to do some damage control. You guys have each other's phone numbers. Did you guys try to call each other about it, or was it like we'll settle this in the public eye? Uh, I mean, it wasn't really a, a too much of a heated thing at that time. Mm -hmm. Like right after the election, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't terrible. We were, we were chatting and you know, he, he did call me and tell me I, I like you better in person, not online. Yeah. I mean, he told me that <laughs> it's tough words to hear. So um, <laughs> yeah, that one person that we know that uh, hits us up on. And to be yeah. honest, Oh I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I, I think one of the things that triggered him was, you know, I had an American flag and another flag flying on a close friends post to about 12 people. Mm. And, um, in my driveway, gated nope nobody could see it and you know i think that was the one that was to my close friends who he was on that list right and um if it was anything public i posted i posted a couple things but i'm i'm proud that i posted it i said 
you know, I'm not sure why we're still locked down if there's going to be, you know, big, um, you know, um, protests in the streets mm -hmm. and big celebrations, but we can't go do concerts. Yeah. I don't really understand right, that. And right, I'm, right. I, I was backing the blue collar hard workers, the people that don't have a voice, people that need that kind of backup support. People like my dad, the way that I grew up, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? People yes. that were out of business, out of work, in a tough spot, losing their everything that they've worked for. You know, I watched your boss, Dave, raise a ton of money during that time. Yeah. Very inspiring. And, you know, I was I was ready to get out there and play concerts, man. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, and again, back Could it have been a thing to, where you guys are having concerts if, if both of you say, yes, we want to do concerts? Or was it more of like a, a label thing where it's like, hey, we're not going to go do... No, it wasn't a label thing in terms of live shows. You know, I think it was up to us yeah. for sure. And there was a disagreement between the two of you whether you should have live concerts or not? Um, I think at the time, yeah. you know, um, I think there was, there was, you know, I know we canceled our, uh, our, uh, 2021 fall tour, um, which I was really excited about. Um, but you know, navigating through that was not easy. Right. Being yeah. ready to, being ready to go, but you know, kind of, that that kind of is what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a that's a tough world. If you guys both have differing views on what's going on, and you're wanting to play concerts, and I'm assuming by you saying you wanted to, I'm only going to have to assume that Tyler didn't want to. And there's a a big disagreement. I mean, there. think about all the stuff in the NFL that was happening, like uh, in yeah. our locker rooms, like when we're having to do all the tedious mm -hmm. things, and some guys are like, "Hey, yeah." Dude, the Titans got put under an investigation where the NFL looked at all of our tapes. To see if guys no were wearing shit. masks. I was or not. in the cold tub, and maskless. They, Good. You were one of the bad guys. Yeah, you were one of the guys they were trying to get. Serious? Swear. I posted something after the game, like we were celebrating a win. Yeah. And after I remember, the Bills game. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Dude, Stretcher's we, like, "Hey, you need to take this down because the NFL will hammer down on us." Like, yeah. I know we're celebrating a win, but you need to have your mask on. I'm just thinking, yeah, this is so gay. It, <laughs> <laughs> it, dude, it really it was crazy because there was a time where we we're supposed to play the Steelers, right? Yeah, we're that got play, canceled. Supposed to play the Steelers. That game gets canceled. And then like four days, they're like, okay, you guys are playing the Bills on Tuesday. We got to get ready. But we can't come in the facility because they were doing an investigation on the Titans. Right. So you guys go practice. Mm -hmm. So a bunch of the offensive linemen, receivers, stuff like that. We Position all kind groups of- groups dispersed. Yeah, and dispersed. We kind of went and did our thing. And that was a park. Big, it's a mess. Yeah. Well, they started looking at cameras of all the NFL teams. And they're like, well, we can't punish all of them. Right. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that, it was, Dude, That's... it was a, I think it was kind of under wraps, some, right? well, Somebody took a photo of the DBs practicing in a park. Or park like a, Hursky, a, yeah, I was like, yeah. oh. Yeah, basically like told on us. Yeah, snitched. Yeah, snitched. Like yeah. we're trying to get ready for the Bills. We got to do something. I know. We uh we actually won that game too. We beat the shit out of the Bills. That, that and we, we were literally like, we don't ever have to practice hey, again. Remember, <laughs> we, at the end of the game, I was like, brought to you by Zoom, sponsored yeah. by Zoom. Yeah. Right? We don't have to practice anymore. Never. Oh, man. We were fresh. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but we had, we had a big outbreak. Bunch of guys uh, got, the, got the vid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> bunch of, we bunch of the boys. Lost a lot of good boys out there, man. It was tough, dude. Yeah. I... My question, in your opinion, obviously there's a lot of, there's a, a multitude of things, but in your opinion, what was the breaking point for you guys? And also, second question, when you think back on some of the way you navigated it, what are some things you look back on about, okay, I could have approached this differently? You know, I, I fought uh, the good fight to keep FGL going and to continue to kind of put together a plan of what that would look like. You know, we were, we were doing our last, you know, Festival shows in 2022, we did probably 12 or 14 of them, and we were killing it. It was great. And mm -hmm. I was, you know, we were talking in person and even, you know, via email and saying, hey, the demand is there. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like hey, we're kind of nice. This, it's, <laughs> I don't think um, us having solo outlets is affecting our main business and our main brand and what we've spent, you know, our entire adult lives doing. Yeah. Um, clearly not affecting that um but breaking point i don't know if there's it sick there we that's go. the breaking yeah, point right there. Say, there there we go. um <laughs> i don't know if there's a breaking point per se but you know he this is this is this part is true i mean he said you know that was his boundary yeah and if he thought it was best to support me by cutting off something that I put my life into as well. That's one way to support somebody. Um, I didn't agree with it, 
Um, I was very protective of our brand, very protective about every move that we made about, you know, are we going to go on and announce we're done on CBS Sunday mornings? No, I'm not. I'm not done. I'm not going on it. Right. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be done. So it's just, you know, seeing things in a different light. And I think he was very concerned about what a solo outlet for me specifically would do to the brand. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he voiced that many times to me. And um, what did he think it would do to the brand? Water it down. And at this point, he has solo stuff out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I'm also... He had solo let's stuff make, let's out Let's put first. more clarity on that. So you and Tyler are having conversations. He's saying if you do a solo act, it's going to water down FGL. But at the same time, he had a solo act going on? Or he was in the middle of cutting solo stuff? Um, it was... It was. These are the initial conversations, probably September, October of gotcha. 2020. Now, for those of us who don't know, how long does it take to write a song like Undivided? Because I think that he, he, when I listened to you talk and I heard Tyler talk, because I went back and listened to it, I texted you today too. You should mm -hmm. probably listen to it because we're going to touch yeah. a lot on it. Is there is such a big miscommunication between the two of you because Tyler feels like he was blindsided. You feel like you were blindsided in a way too that you're like, how does this not all work? So obviously there's a lack of communication, but now we're talking about timelines because that's what's really important. Because if Tyler is saying that's where I draw the line is we're not doing solo acts, but at the same time he's cutting solo acts, well, then we can see where there's a problem there. But if it's like, I want to just know chronologically how this all worked out so we can all kind of figure yeah, our way to yeah. the truth. Fall of, fall of 2020, when I went to him, I had written a pile of songs. After taking some months off, we, like I said, May. This is when you guys May. canceled the tour and everything. This, this is, is this, that No, year. this is 2020 COVID. I mean, if this is okay. fall. Yeah, you're, you're yeah. So halfway fall of, in the heat fall right of, now. But Undivided fall of, was out by then. No. Fall of 2020. Undivided came out January, January 2021. 2021. Okay, okay. All right, I'm caught up. And so, you know, the initial conversations, probably September, um, that was when, you know, he was very concerned about, you know, it watering, you know, it down. But again, I went to him with the idea of, look, it's not just me. Like, you can spread your wings, I can spread my wings, and we can continue to spread the wings of FGL. Right. And we do all a full under three the same show, label. Yeah. We don't have to have different man. Like it could all be under one thing and be supportive in that way and growing. Right. Um, like so planning it all. It was a together. couple months after that, you know, where I was, you know, he's, you know, no music out till the FGL records out. And then December, probably third or fourth of 2020 is when I got a call when I was looking at a boat, like I said, mm -hmm. of, you know, Hey, I'm, we got to make an announcement soon. Um, you know, I'm putting out a song with McGraw, going to radio, doing this. So, um, mm. so December, he calls you, says, I got a song coming out with McGraw, but there was a deal made that we're not going to have any solo stuff released until February when the new FGL album comes That's out. That's right. Um, how did you receive that information when he, when he told you that? No, you're, you're other, probably... other than the political thing, I'm talking about from you, your partners reaching out to you. About the song, about and the song. Doing that when uh, there's an when and what you're saying is there was an agreement already. Yeah, uh, I'm just surprised. I mean, mm -hmm. shocked for sure. Just like, okay, I thought we had a a deal, you know, mm -hmm. um, about what what the plan was. So, I just didn't I didn't think it was going back to my main my main um, thing is protecting FGL. I didn't think that was a good look. Yeah. If I'd have done it or he did it. Right. You know, again, FGL was my top priority. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to, I, I remember y'all were talking about, you know, giving 50% to a solo career and 50% to FGL. I wasn't wanting to put 100% and start all the way over yeah. and play clubs and do all that. I don't mind it now because I, cause I have to. Right. And I'm building and I'm excited about it now. But for people to know how the origin of this all happened, you know, every, a lot of people think I just left and wanted to do solo stuff because that's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. But to give context, you know, I was, like I said, very methodical about how we grow and I want to keep this together. It's important to me. This is a once in a lifetime thing. Um, and again, you know, we talked about it for years. We went to you know, on site in 2018 and chatted about this, this, this plan of, you know, once our record contract's done, we're going to renegotiate and have freedom. You know, there was a time, you know, when we didn't even write separate 
Yeah. And, you know, we kind of, I kind of pushed for, it's okay if we write things separate, man. I'm, I'm a fan of you. You're a brother. I support that. I'm not going to get jealous if so-and-so cuts your song and it goes number one. I'm happy for you. That only helps me. Mm-hmm. And that's how it should be vice helps versa. Helps the brand. Right? It helps the brand. good for everybody. Winning, winning is good for everybody, right? Right. Um, so. Okay. <clears throat> trying to break all this down in my head. Break it down. So you guys had a conversation in 2018 <laughs> about having possibly doing your own solo thing. Oh yeah. When that conversation happened was the plan, the idea fully formulated in your head of, Hey, we should do solo acts as our opening acts and then do a three hour show of FGL. Or were you still working through an idea? How was the communication between you and Tyler in 2018, in 2018 when that first idea came up? Yeah. Not, not probably that then, but Keeping FGL together was top priority. Right. You and know? you both agreed on that. Yeah. You both were yeah. like, FGL is yeah. the number one thing. Yeah. So now we fast forward. He's released that song with Tim McGraw. The album comes out in February. At what point is are you guys like, we're done? And who sent the divorce letter in? <laughs> um, you know, here's, here's, here's what happened. The boundary was, the boundary changed over time. The boundary was... If you want to do that, we're not going to make FGL music for the foreseeable future. Mm-hmm. It's like that. Well, that's not what I want. You know, right. That's that's what I told. Him. I said I hear what you're saying, but that's not what I'm asking for. That's not what I want. Um, so I was like, all right, well, I'm going to make some music, and we're gonna. We had a touring deal. We're gonna looking. We're still going to tour. We we're all excited about that. Um, uh. The songs came out, his song January, he had another song come out, my songs come out, you know, right after my album came out in June, uh, was kind of when, um, you know, it was kind of, uh, made known to me that we were, you know, kind of, kind of done. Made known from somebody on, uh, on your team, from their team? No, Tyler. From Tyler? Yeah. So Tyler reached out to you personally, or did he reach out to you through people? Oh, personally. And he said, hey, FGL is done. Yeah, it went from, you know, no music in the foreseeable future to, you know, now now we're not even going to tour. You know, he was, you know, I'm just I'm just here to tell the truth. I'm not here to try to burn down anything, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm here to stand up for myself and my family. And like I said, the fans. So, you know, he was trying to get out of the 2022 festival dates that we had already committed to because he didn't want to be seen with me. Really? And be seen as a duo because he was already ready to, you know, push his solo career in overdrive. So obviously I can see where you're coming from now when I received that phone call yesterday when, cause you guys are saying exactly, you guys are saying the same things about yourself. Like you're saying that you want to do FGL. He's saying he want to do FGL, but both of you think that the others broke up FGL. How, do, how does that communication ha- like get so lost in translation when you guys are together for 12 years before that doing the barbecues, popping yeah, an addy and headed to the next spot to now we're, Mega stars, like how does the communication between between the two of you just evaporate? Because wasn't there therapy involved as well? Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think the communication evaporated. I think, um, you know, I I put in a lot of work uh, individually and together to help lead the way to to chat with, um, you know, uh, business coaches, mental mm-hmm. health uh, coaches, uh, multiple different options. So I don't think it was a lack of communication. Maybe it, maybe it wasn't just the, you know me having an extra outlet. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but to lay it down that you know BK wanted to go solo and just wanted your support and 100%. just it's just not it's just not the whole truth. There's no context around these sound bites and these clickbait things that he's saying that y'all are putting out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like it's important for me to have my voice heard, just like. I wanted to have my voice heard outside of FGL, right? Mm-hmm. So, is uh, talk to us about when you guys are you guys when you guys are meeting with mentors, business coaches, therapists, whatever it is. Are you guys all in the same room, talking through this same stuff? We've done in the room, and then at a time, you know, in the height of COVID, I think it was a lot of Zoom too. Yeah, so we've done both. Did it ever feel like it was progressing the right way, or did it just feel like you know things are just going to be dividing even further? When you're getting off those calls and sitting with your wife, are you feeling like, oh, I feel like we're making some progress or, man, we might be farther away than I thought we were or how, take us through those? Man, it was just a little bit of a grind to try to to try to try find a place that 
we can meet in the middle and understand each other, but it just, it just never got to that place. You yeah. Know? Is there any, any way in your mind that FGL gets back together one day? Yeah, I mean, you never know, man. I mean, look at the Eagles, look at, I mean, there's, there's lots of groups that have, that have, you know, gone through way worse things mm -hmm. than, than we have, you know, uh, yeah. at the height of everything. It just never was really terrible. It's just seeing things different. And, um, would you, would you get the band back together? Like could bust with the boys potentially, potentially fix for <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, all we're asking for is like, I don't know, 10%? Yeah, like, yeah would you? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we get you down to five. We can have a conversation. Yeah, we're all trying to make a dime out here. Uh, no, same, same. But there is like, no, my mic's all messed up. Mitch, Mitch, tell you something. Is it good? So, hold on, hold on. would you, that's fine, you just keep playing with it. Would you we'll have to want to get the band back together? <laughs> All right, we're good. Man, I think time will tell, you know. I'm I'm really focused on what I'm doing now. Uh, I know he's really focused. He just dropped an album, and I know he's putting a lot of hard work into what he's doing, just, to, just as I am. And so, um, we'll have to see, man, you know. I, I'm sure the fans would like it. I'm sure the fans would would love that man. I'm I'm I feel like I'm pretty in tune with with the fans and you know even on country radio they're jamming FGL songs still a ton. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll Mitch just, does we'll, just have, the time. we'll just have to see. Yeah, yeah, Mitch does. He bangs them. What's your time. favorite song, Mitch? Oh, you know it's Cruise. You know it's you Cruise. Know it's cruise. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you go to a uh, solo act, do you play FGL songs as well? No, I haven't. Yeah, I feel like that'd be odd if you're like singing Tyler's parts or Tyler's doing it and he's singing your parts. It's kind of like just feels this motherfucker. Yeah, while well, you're just, like kind of singing it, I'm sure like you guys both. The thing that I'm trying to figure out and I don't know how to get there because I don't have the degree for it is there's obvious hurt on both sides, and both of you feel hurt for different reasons. Well, it kind of seems like the same reasons. Both both males just trying to be stoic, trying to be reserved, right? But, but knowing that yeah. there's some depth. Like both of you have the same exact energy coming on this bus. Now, when you called me yesterday, I could see, I could hear the hurt in your voice. Very understandable. All that you come on here, There's stoic, passion, calm. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, passion. It's passion. You, and you need to have that. Absolutely. I did say like, oh, I mean, BK's got that. The way Taylor's explaining it, I was like getting a haircut at the time. I was like, oh shit, for real? I was <laughs> yeah. like, man, juicy BK on the bus, I think would be solid. That would be yeah. crazy. Yeah. But it is, it's so, it's, I just wish we could figure out like the, the core of where you both were hurt, how it all, like and how you essentially fix it, if nothing else, and just to have a relationship again, because but you spent 12 years of your life with somebody traveling all over the world, having the success you did, like there's got to be a piece of you that, that misses them a little bit. It's got to be tough. Well, I miss it all. You yeah. Know? I mean, it's it's uh, it's a big part of our life, man. Mm -hmm. It was very, very special. You know, it's, un it's dreams and dreams and dreams came true, you know, doing what we did together. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, very special. Yeah. Um, I was going to hit another point, something you just said a second ago, but I forgot what I was I'm going talking to say. about. Well, the beginning part was me talking about how you guys both seem hurt by the situation, but I can't figure out what the exact point of hurt was. It To me, the way I am viewing both of your stories is I'm trying to play Tyler's story back in my head while also listening to you is you guys, there was a, there was a conversation. I don't know where that conversation was, but somebody spoke about, and I feel like we've, we can say that you brought songs to the table first, being like, I wrote these kind of being like excited kind of like i do with will like sometimes mm -hmm. i'll hear an opportunity i'll get real excited for will and will doesn't know how to react to me because he's like i don't know like do you, what do you want from me and then <laughs> after that it kind of just seems like it was just a slow bleed until you guys died and i don't like there was you know the inauguration we talked about that we talked about him releasing songs before like when you say well, i think getting we back to my love of fgl and the brand and all the hard work and the fans that's one of the reasons that you know, I haven't played FGL songs. I'm mm -hmm. really proud of those. And I, I miss playing those together, yeah. right? That's to me where they should live. Um, I think with with some of these half-truths with no context quotes coming out, right? and maybe him playing FGL songs, one would assume that he's carrying on FGL without me, right? right. It, appear, it can appear that way. So out of, out of respect of what we've built together that's that's why i don't you know mm -hmm. and maybe i will one day you, you never know um they're great songs and i had a hand in writing a lot of our hits 
Um, so, you know, it, it really comes down to, you know, I love our brand. I love what we built. And I was very, very protective um, and and not wanting to announce that we were done because I wasn't done. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. When you when you go back to the call when you were uh, in South Florida and he talks to you about writing the song with McGraw that's going to come out, yada, yada. And you say and I don't know how you responded, but you say, you know, I thought that we had something going on or we had we were figuring something out. Like, what is his response when you're saying something like that? Because I'm assuming it's not just I thought we had something going on. And then you're just like, well, that's sick, bro. And then you guys hang up and it just you go your ways about it. Like, how is that conversation unfolding? when you're under the assumption of something else and you're trying to, Hey bro, I thought we, I thought we, you know, we're going to do X, Y, and Z. I mean, to be honest with you, I just let it happen. When a song's already recorded and you've got a record label that's ready to push it and have this moment. Not much you can do. Yeah. So. Yeah. Damn. Well, Tyler, during the interview, let me see. So we, we asked Tyler about, like the breakup and the fans were kind of clamoring, wondering what was going on. And Tyler said in our podcast that he didn't feel like it was his place to say what was going on. He felt it was for you to say what was going on, kind of putting that situation, saying that it came from you, that you wanted to go solo. That's how this kind of all originated. Where was the conversation? Was there ever a conversation about like you guys, how you're going to announce a breakup, why you should be the one to do it, why Tyler should be the one to do it or do it together? Was there anything like that? Yeah, we went back and forth multiple times, mm -hmm. um, and I just I really wasn't willing to do it yet. You weren't willing to do it because you didn't want no. the breakup to happen. No, I mean it's it's not just yeah, you know, it's two people, right, right? Right. It's like one wants it over and one doesn't. Uh, yeah, but the thing that's crazy is both you guys are saying you're the ones that got broken up with. You know, yeah. you guys are both the ones that seem the most hurt. Like you're like we Tyler. We use the analogy of like getting divorced. Like someone comes to you. And they send give you an ultimatum and they essentially choose sleeping with the neighbors, however Tyler said yeah. it. And now you're saying like, you didn't want it. You didn't want to release this stuff. So you guys are both saying the same thing that you didn't want to leave Florida Georgia line. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Well, I think too, like it's like he says, it's important for him to like kind of speak his truth and give context around the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And there's probably the ultimately it's like, you're not just going to be like, well, he said this, you right. know what I mean? Yeah. yeah it's I like, you're it. trying to like speak. I you're, wish he would. You're trying to tell your side of everything <laughs> while trying not to be like, like I'm not, I'm not coming on here to just be like, Oh, he said this the whole time. I said this, he said that. Right. You know what I mean? I feel like that's kind of hard to be like, because yeah. I see what you're saying. It's like both of them feel like they were caught off guard. Mm -hmm. They're both not not necessarily wanting it to happen. And it's like, well, then how could you guys not figure it out? Like this is this is the de this is the actual breakup that happens where you know they're going to see each other at a bar one night and go home together because there's just so much <laughs> they don't know. And they both have a couple of drinks to see each other. And be like, why did we break up? And they kind of just. <laughs> Go home and do the thing, and they yeah, wake up like, and they remember exactly why. Yeah, like yeah. Samuel L. Jackson shows up. And he's trying to get the the Avengers together. Yes. Yeah. I don't understand that reference, but yes, <laughs> yes. Well, I'm gonna agree with you on that. I'll tell you what we need to do is get the boys back together, not together in a band, but get them in a room together and hash it out. Would you guys come on the bus together? No. <laughs> no, you wouldn't do it. No, said, man. What? What's uh? Where? Where's the? Hey, reason? maybe we start. Let's talk about the good times. Let's talk about the beginning. MFGL. Yeah. yeah. What's the resistance? Let's talk about my new record. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's <laughs> yeah talk about yeah, that yeah. new record, bro. Oh, hey, was Kiss My Boots about Tyler? It's about a lot of people. If y'all yeah. aren't careful, y'all. It's gonna be about y'all too. I uh, know. <laughs> shit. I want write me a line. I'll kill me. Destroy me, bro. <laughs> no, man. It's uh, that song. That song's special to me. Um. And my co-writers, you know, it, it really, I could tell you right now, being in the music industry, and I'm sure being a professional athlete and being in the entertainment industry, y'all probably have a growing list of people that are on your kiss my boots list, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's not directed at one person. It's not, um, you know, the day we, we wrote that song, I didn't show up having that title. I didn't show up thinking we're going to write that song. Mm -hmm. That song came through... Uh, man, I had a guy on Zoom and then two buddies in the room and we spent hours going over starting songs, starting songs, had a chorus here. And finally we were like, man, I go, Hey, let's take a break. I need a bite to eat. And I'm not really loving anything that we're doing. Let's, let's come back in 15 minutes. Come back. Um, fast lunch, my buddy. Yeah. Fast lunch. Uh, my buddy had to get off Zoom, get ready for a show. He was out of state. So I said, Hey, two, two co-writers in the room, are y'all down to stay later? It's a Friday night. And just through being patient, man, and looking for 
no pun intended, looking for the truth in every session, in every writer's room every day, right? Mm -hmm. And so we just started talking about things and my buddy Dylan was like, threw out a line that sparked that song. And then we're all pulling from personal, you know, experiences and, and just collaborating on the idea. Um, but he started with the line, you know, comes out with the whiskey. And um, so that, that, that started the song. And then we landed, I remember landing on the hook with Kiss My Boots. And um, I just, I love the song, man. It's just, it songwriting to me is magic. I have so much respect for songwriters, songwriting game. Mm -hmm. Because there's days that happen like that where you sit and you're patient and you're waiting for the, that spark of authenticity and truth. And then there's days like, you know, I have a song called Trucks, Ducks, Bucks, and Beer. Like, I had that title. I saved it for the right group. I knew I was going to write that song that day. Yeah. So it's just, it's such a it's such a funny thing. Um, but that song, for real, I mean, it's it. at the end of the day, I want people to make it their own. I want people to hear it and go, damn, I've. I felt that way and I've lived it and I've got, oh, yeah. I've got a couple people on my, my kiss, my boots list. And you know, some of the best comments I've seen on that are like, yo BK, thanks for the new workout jam. Thanks for, thanks for channeling and putting to a song what I've been dealing with. Right. So that's, that's been the greatest thing about the song. Um, you know, it's just, uh, you know, the whole album is, is definitely like a party. It's positive. There's love songs. There's songs about being on, you know, a bunch of acres riding around an old blazer, hanging with Brittany, my wife, you know, and I put that song last just because it's it's enough uh, seriousness in one song to make up for the for the brightness of the rest Fun. of the record. Yeah, Good yeah, vibes. yeah. Um, but, you know, life is life is life. And I know we've all been through, you know, points in our life where we all get thrown curveballs, mm -hmm. no matter who you are. Mm -hmm. And so I put that song out. Just to let people know that, you know, I'm a real human. I'm not just a, you know, a face on a screen or a, just some just some guy up on stage. Like, you know, I, I've, I go through things. I've been through things all through my life that are highs and lows. And I song right through them. I always have and I always will. How is it being that vulnerable over your own lyrics when you're essentially giving it to an audience for them to evaluate whether it's good or not? Yeah. You know... I think you just have to let go at some point, you know. I think I you, you just have to be and just work hard on it, man. You get it to a point where you're like, okay, I'm proud of myself. Mm -hmm. I sang as good as I could. The musicians kicked ass on this. It sounds amazing. The mix sounds great. It's thumping, you know, depending on the song, whatever it may be. But there's a point where you're you have no control about how people are going to react. Yeah. Good, bad, in between. They hate it, whatever. They love it. If it explodes. You know, so you have to as an artist, because dude, I could still be working on this record and fine tuning it and drive yourself crazy. Yeah, get OCD ad -libs, about it. You know, yeah. and like, oh, I wrote another song. Let's add to it. Like, I could, mm -hmm. you could do that for days. You know what I'm saying? So there comes a point where you have to really just like, okay, this thing's done. Whatever happens, happens. I hope it's positive. I hope, I hope it's great. I hope it helps my career. Mm -hmm. I hope it continues to build my fan base. I hope they can relate to it. Yeah, um, but being you know. this your second solo album. It, what is the feeling going into the second one as opposed to going to the front, like the first solo album after FGL, like playing stadiums, all that. Yeah. Now you're in a solo act and you're putting out the first album. Are the ner same nerve still there putting this one out that comes out Friday? Uh, yeah, I guess a little bit. Um, you know, I just think of these, the, the two projects that I have so differently, you know, like it was all fun and games and it was, it was such a passion project and such a, 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 re a release for me to put time and, time into songwriting and, and making that first record sunshine state of mind uh obviously covid weird times was like yo i'm writing songs man like that that yeah. helps me and so uh this time this go around you know we don't have any fgl dates on the books like there's no foreseeable future for for the group and so i consider tennessee truth you know my debut record there's no, you know it's the first it's the first project where i i'm standing as a as a solo artist with a career, not just trying to have an extra outlet right. that doesn't compete with FGL, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, like I said, man, everything along along the way for me has been methodical and very intentional and in trying to be as respectful to the fans and the brand that we built 
as 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 much as I could. What uh? First off, Tennessee Truth is a dope name. I know that's a sick it. name. Well, you. The minute you said, it, I was like, that goes. I almost named it Tennessee Tone. Tennessee Tone. Tennessee like truth. truth. You, you made the right choice. Truth. Truth. You made the right choice. I know. Whoever yeah, on the Brittany back goes, there, it's yeah. truth. I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're <laughs> right. You're right, sweetie. I'm going to bed. You're 100 percent right. It's all in here. Stares at a paper for three hours. She just walks by and goes, "That one keeps yeah. walking." Yeah. Like, fuck! I really what, mull this one over. Writing songs. When did you find that passion? As a kid, uh, as you got older, like wh- what made you know that? Oh shit! I can. I got like doing this. Not only do I like doing this, this can be something for me. Yeah, it would be. I mean, I started writing poems like oh. in high school freehand quill like and pen. trying to figure out if i could turn it into a song you know it's like right before i started playing guitar but i remember like writing out like lyrics or words and i always liked poems growing up and my dad loves like little sayings and poems and he'll make things rhyme and mm-hmm. like you know i was always the guy looking up songwriters and and the you know cd covers and like oh snap that's craig weisman that's jeffrey Steele, or that's mm-hmm. you know tony errata uh, all you know, I was very in the know of what a songwriter was, and um, you know, got a guitar when I was about 16 years old at a flea market with my dad, and uh, it didn't start hitting heavy till uh, freshman year at Florida State. You know, I was writing songs during class, like yeah, I didn't between need to partying. Get, what's that between partying? Like Florida State, you know, is I didn't, like I really didn't, go hard. you know, you, you know, surprising shocker, I really didn't party at Florida State, brother. You have a, a gold chain on that has a bass on it. <laughs> you party at Florida State, you got a lot of me. Number one, it's a tarpon. <laughs> my fault, my fault. Uh, no disrespect, please. But I, put me you your know, songs. I did more worship leading at Florida State than partying, really. Oh, yeah, no, shit. yeah. All right. I'm yeah, stand corrected. He, he, I stand like a one eighty correct. That's nothing but the Tennessee truth, right? Yeah, he drinks some beer on the bass. Only tell you, yeah, no, I really, I really didn't, uh. I really didn't partake in uh, at Florida State for my two years there. That is wild. Okay, know, you fa- so Florida State is when you found like, okay, I, this is what I want. Yeah, do. I couldn't, I couldn't stop thinking about songs, and I'd get a title that pop in my head in class, and like, I at that point, I didn't even need a guitar. I could write out the lyrics. I could hear how it could go. Mm-hmm. I'd get home, get my guitar, put Start it in my jamming. little. You know, I had a little, uh, little shitty recording program my roommate had given me, so I could I'd get it down, so I like could have it forever and remember yeah. it. You know. Um, you still have it? No, it was on my old Dell computer, and I have no freaking idea where Dell. that is. Dell, dude, it was a, <laughs> oh, it was a block, man. I mean, it was yeah. like it was it was a block. I have no idea. I mean, it it may be in a storage unit. I've looked for it. You so try if anybody find finds it. a Dell with some yeah. songs, on yeah, it. <laughs> that's mine. Give it back immediately. That's mine. But uh, sure. obviously, you're you're a natural writer. But get like you were saying earlier, this you feel like this is your debut solo album. What what is this album? You know mean to you and also like what have been the learning curves with kind of getting back to the basics even though you naturally are a writer like being solo yeah. on your own you know, this record means a lot to me you know it's it's a songwriter's album i'm so grateful for all the collaborators and songwriters and being able to you know mend our worlds together and find something that we all love that that means a lot to me too and that hopefully you know people that listen to it they're like yo that's my life too mm-hmm. it's a simple record man like i love you know, I, I have a song called Bare Feet or Boots, and that's the lifestyle I live, man. You know, like I love I love being on the farm. I love being in the woods. I love being at the beach. I love being in the backwaters, the lake. You know, I, I you know, my morals and the way that I operate are, you know, God, family, country. And I love working hard. I love having something to look forward to. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, just like the people that are going to be listening to this, man. You know, my world revolves around, you know, working hard, my wife creating time for us to make new memories Mm -hmm. and um you know like what's what's biting all right well we're we're actually in florida i'm checking my bass you know app i'm i'm hitting some of the locals what are are, you know snapper biting yet snapper season how many how many can we get now you know what's uh you know on my little trail cam you know oh damn there's a turkey there's a deer you know that's it's a it's a pretty simple life um that you know i know we've come from you know stadiums and arenas and all these things but when you strip it down you know me and Brittany are really simple man like our favorite nights are you know i've had a quite a few friday nights at the house uh you know since starting this solo career and and writing for the record you know i really wasn't on the road i was home a lot writing and so we had a lot of free you know weekends and friday nights it's like yo dogs are hanging out we're cooking some meals and i'm watching freaking 2020 you know what i'm saying like I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, Bro, there's a vacancy out there. I don't know if you heard, but the great Toby Keith just passed. And you, when you hit me with God, family, country, thought, 
They could be the next Toby Keith. <laughs> <laughs> you could be the next guy. Red Solo Cup. You tell you just wanted to get you into some know. 2020. I've never watched. I've never binged that Dude, show. I'm going to help solve a crime one day. Are you? Oh, you're yeah. that guy? It's happening. Those yeah. shows are incredible. It may be a cold case. It may be a current, you know, new one. Mm-hmm. I'm freaking. The murder mystery stuff. Dude, Dude I had to sit in uh, a deposition the last two days. No way. And uh, just hearing these lawyers talk, I, I found out. I could, there's no way I could ever be a lawyer. <laughs> we would we would go in and they would just be talking back and forth and then we'd go into a room and I'd be like, okay, tell me everything that just happened. Because you're literally like a six-year-old right. watching like Cloud Atlas or something like that right. and not even able to register how smart these individuals are. Yeah. So all that to be said, I would never be able to solve a case. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't happening for me, brother. I'm not putting anybody in jail. Important question for you. Are you a beach or a lake guy? Oh, Yeah. This is he huge. did because he, he you heard well, he named, heard named the boat. Yeah, yeah. He named the well, boat. This is a big one on the bus. You know, our place in Florida, um, we don't live on the beach. We live like right off the beach. We live on a coastal dune lake. So um pretty special little spot, kind of surrounded by the state park. So um honestly, really both because the lake nope. the no, lake, yeah, you can't do that, I'm just bro. gotta honest. draw a line no, in the no. sand and pick one. You no, have to. I can't, well, look, we we the, all enjoy I take the lake being to on get the water. To the beach, you know what I'm saying? Oh. So, that's not a bad call. What do you enjoy more? If you had to pick it's tough. an activity. You got one more day okay. at the beach house. You Your kids are sitting there. It's split 50-50 down the middle. You can either go sand, ocean, waves, life, sea life, or you can go over here, woods, boat, wakeboarding, those types of things. Which one are you picking? Man, if it's going off, as what we call down in Grayton Beach, if it's going off in Grayton, which means the gulf is laid down freaking teal blues look yeah. it looks like a lake it's flat weather's freaking popping we're going to beach day go. we're getting the truck out there we can drive on the beach i'm getting all my coolers i'm getting my umbrellas i'm getting my chairs we're having a beach freaking safari that's how that's i've had some of my best days doing that with Brittany mm-hmm. and some of our friends we may, we have a lot of local friends and um i mean just watching the day go by i mean and and once you get out there i mean like some some days you can get out there and it's just like a vibe day. But mm-hmm. some days, you know, you can fish right off the beach, stick your pole in. You may not catch anything if they're not biting, but just lots of activities. You know, what I'm yeah. saying? You just get the fact there, that there's a line put in the, the paddle water. Boards, put, a just, put the paddle boards. Yeah. Uh, put the stand up paddle boards on the top of the truck. Get, get them out to the beach. Go out in the Gulf. I mean, I knew we'd get there. Bro, yeah. I got you. I can take you on. I, I think Will's becoming sucks. more of a beach guy. He's becoming more of a beach guy. I can hey, take you I did you say go. the better day is a, a perfect beach day based on this where we're at in the Bahamas. I mean, it was fucking. Where were you? What, name a couple spots. Africa, <laughs> uh, is it where? Uh, is it like a discovery property? I don't you even know? know what that means. It was no, nice no, 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 as shit. Discovery property. You know uh, it was. Uh, it was. Is it, what can Albany. I say? No, no, no. Albany. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Albany? No, no. In a nice spot. Nice little Exuma. Pictures. Was it Exuma? I think Exuma. Damn. Well, it was a nice a spot. And they're like, I was telling JP, we went out there on the boat one day and you you like pulled up on a sand dune and the water's like this high on your shin. <laughs> and you're just out like in the middle of yeah. the water. Yeah. On a sand dune. And yep. it was, you know, Rue's running around like it was Dude. it was one of those things when he says teal blue, flat, nothing going it's on. It's unbelievable. Is like a, I said it. I said the yeah. best beach day and vibe has P- beats bests the best lake day vibe mm-hmm. but as far as average what i'd like to do the more majority of my time i think a lake i'm a lake boy that's i love how, the lake that's too. how will works Damn you gotta it's a slow it's been like a three-year conversation this Dang. lake versus beach thing it's been like a three and slowly he'll what come. are you taylor i'm a beach guy okay. i think the culture of a beach you walk around literally you could be as stressed as you possibly you could be in your entire life the minute you step put your toes in the sand and you're looking at the water and you just see people just relaxing and knowing that I might have problems, but not today. Yeah, that is what today. a beach brings. That sounds like That's a song. A you might be a damn songwriter. You're welcome, sir. You can have that. Yeah, you can so have, what you I'm thinking take, at some point, yeah. y'all want to <laughs> do. That's mine. <laughs> you can't just tell me we, we can do it words. He can take it. We should do a little beach trip. <laughs> okay. Y'all come down. We could do one more pod. Have some fun right on the beach. And then just kind of. That could be a good vlog. Celebrate life. I Great vlog. Hang on, nasty. hang on, hang on. Are we going to be on a boat? We could. Oh, bro. Okay. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know, I'm a oh, big yeah. boat guy, big boat guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah so he likes to walk, walk around it and press the buttons. He gets real excited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. feel the wind, feel like a superhero, like flying at the tip. I got you. Yeah. In Grayton Beach, you can launch uh, the captain's launch to go fishing right off the beach. Like, really? They back their boats up, plop them out, and you don't got to go far to catch fish. 
Catch some fish. And then we come back. Get some tarpon. I'm yeah. down. I'm down. Bro. We can all have chains at the end. I know. That thing yeah. does go hard, though. I know I chirped it a little bit, but I kind of I kind of mess with it. You know? That Dude, I got this nice. from... Uh, I've, I've made some really good friends in Grand Junction, Colorado. It's a... Um, it's a family uh, jeweler, th three generations, and the son, the younger son, does a lot of cool freeform gold work. I was there in person years ago on a tour stop. I wandered in there, mm -hmm. found a really cool ring, and uh, we kept a relationship ever since. They've sent me some free things that they've made for me and Brittany, and then I nice. bought some stuff from them. And I just was like, man, can you make a tarpon? Um, with like a little diamond eye and yeah, you know, just something something cool. And he's like, hell yeah, can something I unique? Can I bring it hard. to you uh, at your at y'all show in Vegas? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> hell yeah, every to your show in yeah. Vegas. He's like, Smart he's man. like, I'm not gonna mail it, but can I come to the show and drop it off? I'm like, buddy, yeah, that is a nice. Deal. That's a good trade off. Yeah, so I'm, I'm good buddies with them. They're great people. Mm -hmm. They're living the American dream, working hard, making some really cool pieces, man. That's carrying awesome. their family tradition. That's cool. cool to see. When it's all said and done, you decide to hang up. The guitar where do you where do you see your life you can be at that beach house 24 7 you head west coast what you gonna do uh not the west coast i do love i do love the west coast i, I think there's some great spots it's but not for you full, huh? uh not full time not like mm -hmm. not full time i mean i definitely Taps love too high nevada that's that Blue. nevada's <laughs> nice yeah um arizona you know i could see i love where we're at in florida i mean i don't i don't ever imagine us really leaving there mm -hmm. um I could see, I have a vision of like a, uh, you know, kind of an old Florida farm, uh, maybe maybe more like central Florida, you know, like ranch style. I have an idea to, uh, you know, open this thing where it's like, it's called Good Shepherd Ranch. So we have German Shepherds, we have four, mm -hmm. love shepherds. Um, but basically it'd be like, you know, try to find a good deal on, on a bunch of acreage, um, have a little house there. And be able to, you know, rehabilitate shepherds, take shepherds in that need a home, maybe foster some, um, raise some up. And then I think it'd be really cool too, man. There's kind of another element that I've really been kind of thinking about lately to where, um, you know, maybe maybe some kids that don't have a family system that something like I grew up in. I'm very grateful for my mom and dad um, and and you know, maybe that's something they could come to Good Shepherd Ranch and we can work with dogs, kind of some, some dog therapy and that, mm -hmm. you know, maybe I can rub off on them a little bit in terms of like whatever they're going through and how to deal with things and how to, you know, maybe, maybe some life advice or some, if they want to get into music, maybe there's a little studio on the property, but something that's, yeah. something that's kind of, you know, giving back. Um, and also that has a lot of dogs on it. <laughs> you love dogs. Big Shepherd guy. Love them, man. Inside, inside dogs? Yeah, they are. It's, Shedders. It's their house. Shedders. Big time Bro. You let them on the couch? Yeah. You let them lick your face? Oh, yeah. Bro. Man, only two of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what those other two do to you? The sisters, man, if they've been outside, uh -huh. you better watch it. You'll yeah. smell it before it comes, but they, they, uh, they like to eat the poo poo. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you got two boy dogs, two girl dogs? One boy three girls but we have sisters litter mates smoke and sage and for some reason smoke smoke i have a dog yeah. named smoke can't stand her yeah she can't she's, stand her? she's the worst what kind of dog <laughs> a husky my Maybe wife she needs loves a couple huskies. weeks at good shepherd ranch man yeah, yeah she could go you know? and Taylor, i'll just forget Taylor, to pick her Taylor up would love good shepherd ranch oh yeah, Taylor, yeah the whole time you're talking i'm thinking to myself Taylor is gonna hear this and taylor like, was into it and then you started mentioning fostering and he just started to have like ptsd yeah. dude i'm i'm looking <laughs> after bunnies right now <laughs> I wouldn't, and know I, what, and I wouldn't know what to do with bunnies. Dude, my wife, she's trying to be a, a wildlife rehabilitationist nice. or whatever it is. She's Sick. like getting certified for it. Come on. Sounds cool on paper. And then we get four bunnies. Because cool. she tells me that. I'm like, bro, if we can get a raccoon or like a baby skunk, that would be hype. <laughs> a baby like, skunk? Yes, dude. They don't, get their little, they don't get their smell thing until like two years old. Oh, oh, I didn't so know they kind of just chill and hang out. And Ooh. I'm thinking we're going to get some dope animals. And they throw bunnies over at us. We got bunnies. I got two of them that just sit outside, hang out. Are they, do they bite or are they? No, they're like, they're literally, dude, they're this big. Oh, cool. They're this big. And I have to bottle feed them every night, every night and every morning. Damn. And it just pisses. <laughs> they're the great. look on his face. <laughs> they're great. <laughs> yeah. Love bottle feed them. It's having starts, a great it time. Off, yeah. It starts off with my wife being like, honey, I want to do this. I'm like, yeah, you go ahead and do that. I love that. Sure, I support you, whatever you want to yeah. do. But then one night, Kids have a hard night. I come downstairs. I'm ready for bed. I'm, if I'm a guy, like the minute the kids go to sleep, I'm trying to get to sleep by 930. Yeah. If I can get to sleep by 930, my life's going to be great the next day. And that's really all I'm thinking about. Same. And she's, it's like 915. She's like, oh, I got to feed the bunnies. That's an hour. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's an hour of my life that I got out now. Luckily they're getting older. So we're going to release. When she says days. that, what do you say? You're like, damn, that sucks. Right? No, no. You know me, dude. I fucking bend the knee quick, quick. Oh, I, I mean, I have an attitude. I have like a teenage attitude and then I go and do what I'm supposed to be doing. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. oh. I have a bad attitude and then I do it. Just kind of stomp around. Go the to house. bed kind of man. Good Shepherd Ranch sounds like it could be what we talked about the ranch or it could be like, it's like total Hallmark movie. Yeah. Yeah. Good Shepherd Ranch. Yeah, right. It's yeah. like, I could, I could see, see the that sun too. setting. Oh yeah. It's like this crazy love, Southern love boy story. meets yeah. a city girl. Exactly. They don't belong together. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe but good the dogs Shepherd bring them together. Yes. <laughs> steals something from her, steals her purse, runs over to the guy. That's how they meet. Yeah. Dog's cute. He's cuter. What's going to happen? <laughs> Damn. It, the boy will just get going now. He's, yeah, gonna, he's about like, to create an entire movie. I do us. enjoy living in my own head. Um, my, what my wife wants to do, she wants to like, get a farm yeah. and then have a grocery store attached to the farm. Nice. Like, everything comes from there. Yeah. It's like her next dream that she wants to do, which that I think would be amazing, sick. Like, uh, was it Casa Boniva? Is that what it is? Casa Boniva. Meat, oh, 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 yeah, but that's a slaughterhouse. Slaughterhouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ours is kind of like a, like we would have to like ninja smoke them, like go up to the cows. Farm, like, slaughterhouse table. And then just, you know, yeah. you get them down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, what's Charles want to do? You should probably do that. Ah, not that. Not that. <laughs> not that. She's already doing something. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to purchase a couple things. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like what? She, uh, Bar 3 Studios. She's a franchise operations manager for Bar 3. It's like a boutique fitness. Nice. It's like uh, tailored toward women. It's like Pilates, group fitness yep. type of vibe. And uh, she's been in that industry. She's been with that company for a while now. And a couple, there's an opportunity that popped up in Nashville. That's right now. We are in the in the middle of trying to. Oh, she would like to be a business owner. Hell yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that. on that. I know. What? Get I that. Know. What's up? Let me get on it. <laughs> Taylor, I got a question for you. Go ahead. So when you, you just do these, when you do, <laughs> you just save the shit out of Will. The when you do these ice baths. <laughs> So say you're you're in Vegas. I've seen you do ice baths in Vegas yeah. when you're out there, you know, uh, playing blackjack and stuff. For some reason, I can't wrap my head around because it's in the hotel room, the ice bath, right? Mm -hmm. Where does how do you, how do they get the water out in the hotel room? That's the best part about Red Rock. I don't know, <laughs> dude. Red Rock is the greatest like hospitality place I've ever been in my entire life. I've been to Blackberry Farms. I've yeah. been to really nice places. The hospitality of Red Rock <laughs> is second to none. Okay. I told them one time, hey, it'd be cool to have a, a cold tub in my room. The next time I came there, there's a cold tub. They refill the ice. I spill everywhere. I don't clean it right. myself. I'm a dirty boy. And then I come in, everything's cleaned up, car car everywhere. It's mm. it's unreal. So I don't have an answer. The hospitality is crazy. It's, it's nuts, dude. You, when get, you get an black, answer. I'm curious. You yeah. get into blackjack when you're out there in Vegas? I love that's That's really all I play. Uh, really? Yeah, I love blackjack. Shoot, Tunnel of like chaos. chaos. Dude. I, I really enjoy it. Yeah. I've, I've had some good nights in Vegas. Nothing crazy. I know there's like some other country artists that go freaking ham mm -hmm. and that, that they'll bet like a ton, ton. Name one. You know, I'm, <laughs> you don't have to I'm pretty one. conservative when it comes to, you know. Uh, you should like to play gambling. vibe. I made some pretty good money, but like I kind of, I kind of start slow and then, you know, I kind of, I'm a, I'm a feel guy. So like if I mm -hmm. kind of, I get that from my dad too. You, you kind of feel what you're going to get you know it's like if i yeah. feel like i'm about to get hot like i'm all right double down double down you figure out figure out what you're going to do but yeah. what's been your best trip uh how much, you, how much yeah well, how much yeah. you leave with probably 14k nice. not not like i know y'all 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 go with dana and you know yeah but that's a cheat code like we're not like, we're living in a fantasy world. world that's a different like 14 world. going home right. at 14 is amazing yeah, yeah when you're yeah. Yeah, when you're but i started with like shoot i started with like five or six hundred. That's yeah, a that's great nasty. Just trip. Hit, bro. Just that like, is and then I'm like, all right, I can tell us this shit's getting cold. I'm rolling. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. my problem. I feel like yeah. Jack will hit some looks like that. He'll I have think a few hundred and turn it into a few thousand. Yep. There, yeah, Jack will go crazy. It's sometimes. fun, man. It's a fun game when you got people you know, you know, and you have a have a have a drink, whatever. Yeah. And it's like, I just I love that game. I really mm. do. Yeah, yeah. We would do just, online trips, and Will came on one one year. And it was like five of us sitting at the table, two or three so guys standing fun. behind, just drinking drinks, all kind of like talking each other into betting a little bit oh, more yeah. while also Fo being scared about more. Football terminology. So, yeah, run the ball is $100. Nice. Like, oh, hey, we're throwing a Hail Mary 500 here yeah. on this one. Yeah, damn right. And the boys just win or lose together. It's awesome. Yeah. The world Will and I have gotten into has kind of been, it's a little, it's much more scarier. There's a lot more room for error. It's How like, often do y'all go there? I try to go every month. No way. <laughs> <laughs> I try to go every single month. Like truly have a, I have like a, oh, I have man. such an addictive personality 
And the minute I saw that this was possible, and then when I start to lose, how Dana kind of just saves me, like I'm his kid. It's you no, there's no reason right to there. never go there. It's Dude. it's ridiculous. Well, hopefully we end up in Vegas together because I'd love to play with y'all. Well, I'll tell yeah, you, you go fun. to you take us to Florida. We hit that beach day. We have no choice but to get you to Vegas. I'm down, man. That sounds like a good deal. I, I don't know what you're doing uh, June 26th, but you could come watch the Beer Games Championships of the World. That's the problem, Will. June 25th. June 25th. <laughs> June 25th. <laughs> That's what Big Cat was talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. June, June 25th. It's on a Tuesday. Oh, you should actually come June 20. Okay. Yeah, June 24th. June 24th when we're gambling. Yeah, so we're doing okay. the Tunnel of Chaos. We're going to have a big party in Sick. the uh, high roller room of Red Rock. And then it's going to be like food, drinks, people gambling. We'll have a little tunnel yeah. where there's going to be one table with just one betting platform where that's the Tunnel of Chaos. Dude. Dana will be there. It's going to be a nuts time. We'll get you the info. If I can work if it out, you, I'm Yeah, on it's a Monday. To. Yeah. It's okay. a Monday because we it's all tailored around people that are kind of in your category who are like travel Thursday to Sunday. Yeah, yeah. And so we want everybody to kind of come and mm -hmm. have their schedule be as open as possible. Cool. Yeah. But, what uh what can we look forward to this year after the album drops tomorrow? Uh man, I got some uh I got some festivals this summer. Um really excited about that. Um already played Tortuga a couple weeks back. That was like a awesome festival right on the beach. Yeah. Very fitting uh for what for what I do and um I think I'm going to bring back, uh, I did this in 2022. I did like a mini residency. I did probably damn 26, 27 shows, but we have a little surf shop we own down in Grayton where we live. Mm. And uh, we kind of converted the backyard space into a little concert venue. And so nice. uh, real, real intimate, maybe 200 people max a night. So I'm going to do probably, I think right now we've got it at 12 shows, you know, a couple in June, a couple in July. Uh, so really looking forward to that, man. I know, I know the fans that came the first time had a great time and, uh, it's kind of a power acoustic set, but really casual, really intimate, really stripped down. And it's, um, you know, I, I really loved it, man, because, you know, it was an experience that I was able to create that didn't exist, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I think that was, that was, that was really enjoyable to, you know, um, I love playing all sorts of venues. I love, I, you know, it's fun to play, go back and play small clubs. It's great to do that. Yeah, fun, man. obviously, to play big, big, you know, arenas, amphitheaters, all that. Um, but to really connect in, you know, a 200 person uh, space, man, is like, I don't know. I feel like I got my chops up even more when I did that, man, because you kind of put yourself in a position to where it's so personable and personal that you've got people there to like hey play play this song and you're mm. like sick all right yeah calling out something from the record that maybe wasn't on the set list but you're really able to connect and um you know that's what Brittany and i love about you know being entrepreneurs and creating things is like trying to figure out it's all about the experience you know what i'm saying and to offer something different that doesn't exist really really gets us excited and yeah so i'm excited about that and then this fall Probably some more touring, trying to trying to get the logistics lo locked down for that. But, That's uh, awesome, man. I'm excited about. I know I got obviously a record coming out, but I'm really looking forward to getting back in the studio and writing and and seeing what what else we can come up with. Is that your number one passion? Is the writing part? Uh it is. I mean, it's one of my main things, but I don't think I could have it without the other <laughs> part. You know, like I love writing and grinding and thinking and brainstorming and figuring out the freaking details of the song and the message of the song and all that, even the production and love recording it. Um, but the whole, the whole thing of getting it out on the road and playing, playing live and doing mm -hmm. that. I mean, I don't think I could have one without the other. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Dude, we appreciate you coming on. I yeah. appreciate you being open, being honest. Hell yeah. And having a little fun too. Yeah. yeah, yeah damn yeah. good time. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate the platform and I, I thank y'all for answering the call and getting me on here and, um, I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thanks for thanks for being open. And Glad you can come on, man. Being being willing to hear, you know, my side and my experience, and hopefully for everybody listening, you know, I hope, hope that has given some clarity. Yeah, absolutely, man. Before we get out of here, go in. I know you already talked about it, but plug that new album real quick. Tennessee yeah. Truth. Check out Tennessee Truth. It's a good time, and uh, it's all about simple living, working hard, playing harder. Yeah, and uh, loving who you love. Hope you uh hope y'all can make it the soundtrack to your summer and maybe your fall too. And I hope it I hope these songs mean something to you. They mean a lot to me. And um I hope you can figure out a way to put them in your everyday life, whether that's headed to work or on the lake. That's right. Mm -hmm. Or on the uh, lake, on the beach. While you're partying, whatever. Yeah, yeah. 
Tennessee Truth is dropping uh, tomorrow. BK, thank Which you. Which is, what's the date on that? Thank you. Absolutely. May 10th? Girl. May 9th. May 9th. Today's the 8th? Well, it's Friday. Friday. Oh, oh, yeah. The 10th. Friday. Jobs Friday. 9, 10, same thing. May 10th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brother, appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hell yeah. That was awesome.